Teenage suicide continues to be a significant and ongoing challenge in the country. Now, according to the South African Depression and Anxiety Group, one in four calls that they receive is a suicide call, with the majority of those being young people. Now, reports from the South African Federation for Mental Health says among uh, South African university students, 46.4% mentioned having thoughts about uh, suicide, while 26.5% reported planning their suicide and 86 reported having attempted suicide. Bahai Tudumelang, good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwane. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we discuss the ways in which we can uh, go about addressing the prevalence of teenage suicides in the country and how to provide adequate emotional and psychological support for teenagers. Now joining us in studio via Zoom uh, to have this conversation is Lebo Hamukwena, who is a dedicated counsellor from the South African uh, Depression and Anxiety Group, SADC. Lebo Hang, uh, good evening, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Tabo. Thank you so much for having us today. Much appreciated. I mean, Lebo, maybe just to refresh the memory of our viewers out there, maybe let's talk about what SADC do, uh, the job that you do on a single basis and your functions as an organization. Thank you so much. So the South African Depression and Anxiety Group is a mental health helpline. So what we do is we assist with mental health related issues. So we focus on things like depression, trauma, suicide, anxiety, just to list a few. Um, and we do operate on a 24 hour basis. So people are welcome to contact us. Our numbers do operate 24 seven. Mm. I mean, the Teen Suicide uh, Prevention Week is this week. Maybe if you can tell us more about this awareness week and also what are some of the key things you know it seeks to highlight so with the teen suicide prevention week we are trying by all means to create awareness around teen suicide um, there is a lot of stigma around teen suicide in our country so as SADC we are trying you know to raise awareness around teen suicide in the country mm. um, uh, how prevalent you know is teenage suicide uh, at present in the country I mean we've seen a rise or a decline in its prevalence over the past few years. But uh, recently we've seen quite a lot of cases of uh, very young people, especially uh, in primary schools, uh, that you would see that they've taken their lives. Yes, you know, the rise is increasing. Um, you know, with the teen suicide cases that we see a lot, there is an increase, you know. Um, so as the South African Depression and Anxiety Group, we are trying by all means, you know, to communicate youngsters, communities, you know, parents, educators about the topic so that they also do know more about the signs to look out for and how to assist teenagers. Mm. What do you think is the major problem? Uh, I, I mean, uh, is it an issue of, uh, you know, uh, what's happening within the households normally or sometimes are these issues uh, caused by bullying in schools uh, I mean I mean you would hear cases that uh, a person has came out as part of the LGBTQ community and then uh, you know maybe they are bullied in school they are being called names and at the end they are taking care I mean they are taking uh, their lives what do you think um, p people can do to, 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 to survive in such situation? And also, how do parents come in in situations like this? Definitely. So to answer your first question, there are a lot of things that do contribute to teenagers wanting to take their lives. You'll find that it could be family related issues. It could be peer pressure that we are seeing, you know, it could be bullying as well. There are a number of things that could contribute to teenagers ending their lives or wanting to end their lives. So this is where, you know, parents, educators, community members come in place, you know, whereby we try by all means to educate them more regarding the things that they can do from their end, you know, to assist teenagers. So for parents or educators or even community members, things that they can do from their end are three things, you know. So firstly, asking questions, you know, um, listening when they do get those answers and then connecting. So what I mean by that is asking the right questions, you know, sitting down with the teenager and asking them to say, you know, as of late, I've been noticing quite a few changes in your behavior. What has been going on? Thereafter, we need to listen, you know, to engage with them, to provide them with the empathy and the support during that time. 
thereafter we connect you know so we try by all means to help them to find resources that they can make use of such as the south african depression and anxiety mm. i mean uh, you know obviously you deal with quite a lot of uh, cases that have been happening uh, throughout i mean over a period of time uh, has there been a trend um, you know uh, is it only on young people only or just generally, you know, older people are also uh, uh, taking their lives uh, uh, in, 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 in different situations? So it, it's not just only young people that we are noticing, also elderly people, you know, um, those that are still young adults as well. We are noticing that a lot of people are struggling out there, but we are noticing that there is an increase in terms of teen suicide um, and the amount of cases that we've noticed so far. You know, I mean, the youngest child so far, um, according to the statistics, um, the youngest child that died by suicide was six years old. So you can already imagine, you know, how difficult it must be for these young ones out there, um, you know, to experience all these challenges that they're going through. Mm. Lebo, I want us to park it there. We're going to take a quick end break. When we come back, I want us to expand on the uh, conversation. Do stay with us. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Before the ad break, we started the conversation on Teen Suicide Prevention Week with the South African Depression and Anxiety Group, SADAG. Uh, we continue the conversation with Lebo Hamukwena, who is a dedicated counsellor uh, with the organisation. Lebo, much appreciated for uh, staying on. I mean, before the ad break, we started to speak about some of the challenges that teenagers say they face that leads to them to having thoughts, you know, of suicide. I mean, you've touched on uh, various issues, particularly looking at also the support for parents, guardians and teachers and just the greater community. Um, uh, but, you know, I'm interested in finding out what should be the signs, uh, you know, that one should uh, look out for, especially as a community. I mean, we know that uh, quite a lot of uh, households are child-headed households also, uh, but the role of the community in that household also, what is it that they can look uh, out for? Definitely. So there are three things to look out for. Um, so talk, um, mood, as well as their behavior. So talk is usually the things that they say, um, you know, so all of a sudden they're starting to talk a lot about wanting to end their lives. Um, starting to talk a lot about, you know, not feeling okay, maybe having depression, for example. So we're looking at how they speak, right? Um, in terms of their behavior, this is how, you know, they behave. So all of a sudden they're very snappy or they're having mood swings. And you know that, you know, this particular teenager is not one to have such signs. And uh, the last one is, you know, their behavior. Um, you know, so how is it that they carry themselves out there, um, their mood as well, and you know, how is it that they speak? So those are the three important things that we need to be on the lookout for. Hmm. I mean, Lebo, um, I, I, I was just looking at the stats. I mean, last year we saw uh, more uh, suicide rates rising to as much as over 54%, which is obviously concerning. Uh, uh, I mean, in a country uh, like uh, South Africa, I mean, in any other country, if I may put it that way. Uh, but I, I'm also interested in finding out um, what should be done. I mean, we know that adequate mental health care provision somewhere, somehow could reduce, uh, you know, the high suicide rates in the country. Are we really doing enough in order to address the mental health issues uh, for, for, I mean, of different people? We know that people are afraid to speak but there are underlying issues somewhere, somehow. Um, so as said, we do believe that knowledge is power, you know, so education is so important. Psychoeducation, learning more about different mental health issues out there can be so important, you know, as a way to help you to say, you know, if you do identify specific things from, you know, a loved one or a teenager, you're able to kind of pinpoint that, you know, potentially they could be experiencing depression or they could be experiencing anxiety. So it's very important for us, you know, as a society to educate ourselves. I mean, as SADAC, we do have our website, which is www.sadac.org, which has so much information on there regarding the different mental health issues, you know, that one could be experiencing. Mm. I mean, there's also a stigma, you know, level that is still associated with uh, therapy 
and counseling in our communities which somewhere somehow may delay a teenager getting the help that they require i mean how do we go about you know breaking this stigma and helping people understand that someone who is getting psychological help is in fact i don't like using the word but is in fact not crazy Mm, yes, definitely. Um, so as community members, it's very important for us to break the stigma. You know, we hear at times that learners say that they don't want to speak up because in their communities, you know, people don't believe in mental health. There are a lot of stigmas around that to say it's probably witchcraft, you know, or maybe this child is just going through a so-called stage. So it's very important for us to, you know, break the stigma around that to create, you know, that space safe space for the learners, for these teenagers, so that they are also able to open up more about what they're going through. It's very important that we play that role in our society, you know, to break the stigma so that we can create awareness, you know, and also empower youngsters out there to actually reach out for assistance. Mm. I mean, is it, you know, too soon to say that uh, this is a global emergency? I do believe that, you know, as SADAC, we are trying by all means, you know, to break the stigma, to educate people, you know, we're noticing that the numbers are increasing, you know, on a daily basis. So it's very important that us, you know, as a society, parents, you know, educators, community members, that we try by all means, you know, to increase the awareness, you know, to speak more about, you know, teen suicide, because the more we talk about it, the more we actually get to educate others regarding it. Mm. Um, so, Lebo, I, I want to understand now, what are some of uh, some other myths associ associated with suicide and especially teenage suicide, suicide uh, that we need to debunk? Obviously, you know, with the various communities and stuff, somewhere, somehow, there are myths that exist. Uh, even though uh, earlier on we did spoke about uh, saying that people might think that this person maybe, um, you know, they call them names and stuff in the community if uh, they feel that uh, somewhere somehow you are facing a certain uh, a mental uh, health issue as that i've realized when we do go to these schools and we actually engage with the learners you know we get to ask them to say them as for example grade eight learners do they believe that they can have depression a lot of them say no and it's associated with the myths around that to say you're so young to have depression you know how is it that you have depression depression is for people who have stress issues you know who have financial issues so there are a lot of myths you know people tend to say that they're just seeking attention um others tend to say that you know they're just being selfish there are a lot of myths that we really do need to attend to and to help in terms of breaking the stigma so that these teenagers can actually reach out more for assistance mm, i mean you are mentioning a very important uh, aspect there you know schools also um you know when you visit the schools i mean looking at the curriculum in general um you know uh, it, over years it has changed somewhere somehow and uh, you know life orientation is still there to assist uh, young people to discuss certain issues but also the issue of lack of counselors at various schools somewhere somehow it plays a role in these issues to escalate to such a rate that we are seeing now somewhere somehow it is unfortunate, you know, that at times we, we do lack resources um, at a lot of communities, you know, um, you'll find that learners don't have access to counsellors around them, you know, um, at different places, at community centres, for example, or even clinics. So organisations such as SADAC are there to help, you know, we assist with telephonic counselling and we get to speak to the learners, you know, more about what they're going through. And we are able to provide them with the resources that they need so that they can get the assistance that they require. Mm. My guest tonight is uh, Lebohan Mukwena, who is a dedicated counsellor with the South African Depression and Anxiety Group. Uh, she's going to still stay on with us. We're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, we'll look at uh, the uh, you know awareness campaign, uh, which is the suicide, Teenage Suicide Awareness Week. Uh, there, we'll discuss more on that just on the other side. Do stay with us.
Welcome back. Uh, you're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tambo Mulukwani. We are getting closer to the end of the show and we've been discussing Teen Suicide Prevention Week with the South African Depression and Anxiety Group. Lebo Hang uh, is still joining us uh, this evening. That's Lebo Hang Mukwena, who is a counsellor there at uh, Sadak there. She's still with us via Zoom. Lebo, much appreciated for staying on. I mean, as we understand it, uh, Sadak has been on an awareness campaign with schools as far as teenage suicide is concerned. Maybe you can tell us more about it. I know that uh, you'll be hosting various online events to educate and inform communities on uh, what teenagers go through and how you guys can help. Maybe tell us more about that. Of course. So as SADAC, you know, we've been running this campaign for quite a while now. So um, we try by all means to raise awareness um, in terms of Teen Suicide Prevention Week. So this is a week where we raise awareness about mental health, about suicide, about teen suicide specifically in different schools. So currently we are differenting um, visiting a lot of different schools. Um, we are educating learners regarding suicide and mental health as well, you know, depression as well as anxiety and trying to break the stigma around that and kind of creating awareness for them as a way for them to reach out for assistance. Mm. I mean, from your interactions with the teenagers in their schools, what uh, could be some of those challenges that they've spoken about that they are facing uh, in schools uh, or in the community that they come from? And also, uh, you know, uh, what is the, the help that they need particularly? Learners do mention quite a number of things, you know, they do mention that there's a lot of pressure that they're experiencing, be it at home, be it in schools. So at home, you'll find that they're exper expecting them, you know, to um, perform, particularly, you know, to pass academically. Um, in terms of schools, you know, they do associate themselves with different friends, you know, but then there's so much pressure that they're experiencing from them. Um, other things could include, you know, um, family issues, you know, it could include traumas that they've been through as well. There is a lot that they've mentioned from their end that they are having um, challenges, you know, with quite a number of things from their side. Mm. I mean, uh, Lebo, also there has to be the do's and don'ts that uh, you can provide to people as far as you know, providing effective support to a teenager who may be suicidal or, or as Sadek, uh, you know, maybe let's try to educate people more about that and remind them what should be the do's and don'ts. So some of the don'ts include, you know, not looking down on this learner, you know, not making them feel inferior because of what they're going through. Considering that there's such a stigma around mental health, at times you'll find that learners try to reach out but you'll find that the people that they do interact with tend to make them feel so small, which is so sad to witness from their end. Um, some of the other things that we shouldn't be doing in our communities and society, you know, is not make them feel ashamed of what they're going through. Um, we shouldn't also say to them, you know, that they're being so selfish, you know, how is it that they're experiencing all these thoughts, whereas, for example, they have been brought up in such a great family. Some of the other things, you know, that we also need to kind of start looking into is stop saying to the learners that they're just seeking attention. But rather the things that we can do, you know, to kind of empower the learners is actually thank them when they do come to us and they say, you know, I'm going through such a difficult time. Thank them for sharing that with you because you can already imagine the stigma that is associated with mental health in our country is so high, right? So for a learner to come to you and to actually say to you that I'm going through a difficult time, it takes a lot of courage and strength. It is so important for us to kind of, you know, acknowledge that and say it must have been very difficult for you to reach out to me about this. However, I am here for you. I am here to support you as best as I can. And we will find a way around this. I mean, Lebo, uh, even though teenagers, you know, can distinguish between right and wrong uh, at this point of their lives, I mean, uh, they are faced with crisis of identity, as you've uh, alluded to uh, earlier on, and confusion, according to their psycho-social uh, development uh, stage. Uh, you know, what do you think also, in, in terms how do we make sure that we channel resources to these young people so that we can be able to assist them in their time of need? Like I mentioned earlier, that education is key. Knowledge has so much power in it. 
when a teenager comes to you and they say to you that they're struggling, you know, with identity, it's important for you to sit down with them and kind of understand what they're going through and the challenges that they're experiencing, you know, have that conversation with them, put yourself in their shoes and kind of understand what is it that they're experiencing. Thereafter, if you don't know what is it that you need to do or how you can support them, you're more than welcome to give us a call, you know, call us as SEDAC and we will be able to provide you with the resources that you both can make use of as a way for the teenager to get the assistance that they need. Mm. I mean, uh, Lebo, um, uh, you know, before we conclude the conversation, I mean, I've been just looking at uh, some of the numbers here. I mean, we, research is showing that, uh, you know, more females uh, they attempt suicide m more than males, uh, uh, but uh, more males, they succeed due to the more violent methods that they, are, they, they, they select in this instance. So the numbers somewhere, somehow, they vary according to uh, the different uh, genders uh, are there. Uh, but for an older person also who needs assistance, uh, you know, if they feel that they're their, 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 their immediate family is not there for them also. How do we provide that necessary support for them? I know that they can call you guys and you are able to assist them there and there, but how do we assist them uh, as older, the older generation? Because we know that obviously they want to bottle things up. Sitting down with them, you know, is the first thing that you need to do. You know, sit down with them, explain to them as of recently I've been noticing you know changes in your behavior in your mood you know and the things that you say I am quite concerned about you you know eventually they will open up um, as time goes by they will open up if they're not ready to open up there's no need for you to force them to they will open up when the time is right I think the most important thing is them knowing that there is support that you know what when I am ready, I know that there is someone out there that I can rely on who is going to provide me with the support that I need. So having that conversation, starting that conversation with them, there's so much power in that because you're kind of providing them with, you know, the power to say, you know, actually, I'm really not okay and I need to reach out for assistance. Mm. Just Lebo, um, uh, before I let you go, let's give um, the viewers there some of the details if they want to contact you or where can they find you any number any website again so they are more than welcome to give us a call on our suicide crisis helpline which is 0800 567 567 i'll repeat 0800 567 567 they're also more than welcome to visit our website which is www.sadac.org and they'll be able to find more information on there Lebo, much appreciated. That's uh, Lebo Mukwena, much appreciated for coming and sharing uh, those uh, insightful advice to our viewers out there. Much appreciated. That is uh, Lebo Mukwena there, who is from the South African Depression and Anxiety Group, just uh, giving us more insight on Teen Suicide Prevention Week and how best we can go about providing adequate emotional and psychological support uh, to our teenagers. I'm gonna ask my colleagues to flag the numbers there if you want to get in touch uh, with them uh, there. Uh, uh, if you are experiencing uh, problems there, you can uh, call them or visit their website. They will be able to assist uh, there. That's how we wrap up uh, today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode by simply sending us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za or you can call us or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. Hi, Tori Lehole from myself, Tabo Molokwane, and the rest of the team. Good night and thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the latest news update with Mas Chaba Kobola coming up next. Good evening.